Hi there, my name is Cuboid and today we're going to take some Hasselblad photos. Now this is not uh, normal from what I would normally do, I'd normally do them outside, landscape, maybe some portraits outside, but I'm actually going to do some self-portraits and um, I've not done self-portraits since I was at university and I call them self-portraits to make me sound more artistic, uh, but literally all it is is taking photos of myself on Hasselblad. 503 CW. Now these cameras are beautiful. Um, this needs to go back to where it belongs soon, so I want to make use of it whilst I have it. Now I have something really, really interesting. I have some uh, Fujifilm Pruvia 100F. So this stuff is not made anymore. It's expired by 20 years and it's 100 ISO, which means I'm going to need quite a long shutter speed just so that I can um, get some light onto this. So it's 100 F, 100 stands for 100 ISO and the F stands for super fine grain, um, super rare. This is different from negative film because negative film right, starts off as dark and you expose light onto the film and it exposes to light, so it goes from dark to light as opposed to, this. so for example negative film, if you overexpose it you'll have a longer shutter speed because your shutter speed's longer, you'll overexpose it as opposed to positive film. If you overexpose it, it goes dark because the film starts off as bright and it goes to dark. So usually a negative film, you want to slightly, slightly overexpose it or get correct exposure because if you slightly overexpose it, that means you get more detail in the shadows as opposed to positive film where you want to slightly from like detail point of view you want to do a shorter shutter speed time so that you get more brightness in the photo does this make sense probably not no problem what i've got in front of me is the camera it takes 120 film which is what this is and to do self portraits I've got a, a shutter release cable okay so we're gonna load the film into the camera I've done this many times before there's no film in it because it says it's red which means there's nothing inside or it's done pull this from here twist this pull this out a little bit the film holder whatever you call it comes off then open this so this is 20 years expired expired in 2004 in October it doesn't mean it's bad it just means that every every year that goes by it just gets less sensitive if you want to take the spool from the old one and move it over to the other side put the spool on the pegs and you want to keep this taut all the way around and then there's like a little tab here and that's going to fill into that's going to feed into the old film spool from the other roll of film so we're just going to feed that into there and we're just pulling it round and it's going to say start here and as it says start we're lining those arrows up with the little red arrow that's on the side of the film cartridge holder we want to line that arrow up with that arrow there and i was always taught to just do it a little bit more so that you definitely don't miss that first slide. Just put it on like this, being careful because it's very, very expensive. And it's gonna stop me when it's on number one. And it will show me in this little window here. And there we go, the one is going to appear, there it is. And then we put the handle back now we're ready to shoot off our first shot. So what's annoying is that I want more of a wider shot so that I could get more of the room in as opposed to a closer one, but I have to get a closer one because I need to release the shutter. So as far away as I can get is get my arm here. So I'll get my arm out of shot and get more of a portrait like that. It's not ideal. Put the focus on the cushion so that the slither of focus is going to be around here. And I put it on F5.6, 
so that there's not going to be slim 2.8 uh, aperture. It's going to be widened at about 5.6, which gives the lens a better chance of picking up the focus on my face. So, because I'm filming me with my iPhone 14 Pro over there, I'm using my old phone, which has got a light meter app. It's saying I need at least a second of exposure. So me keeping still for a second is going to be tricky. So um, we're going to have to give this a go. Okay, so I've got a massive mirror here. And I'm just taking a picture of myself in the mirror. It needs to be on a tripod because the shutter speed is one second. There. And then we're on F28. And the shutter speed again is a second. We roll on to the next shot, so here we go. So the next shot I'm gonna do is sat on the sofa here. I put the checker cushion just lent up just there so that I could sit um, and have my face in focus there and I can also reach the shutter release cable here. Shutter speed is half a second because we're in a brighter area. This is 20 year old film and I could just blow it and get the focus off each time. I'm nervous. <laughs> A couple of sounds that you hear there. You hear the ticker, which is the timer for the half a second, and you also hear me pressing in, which opens the body's two bits of material that open up because in the lens includes the aperture and the shutter speed. So the timer is in the lens, the shutter speed's in the lens, uh, the aperture's in the lens. So the body literally just holds the film, the magazine, and it just those two doors that open. They open up and then all the timings and, str and strut speed goes off it goes off in the lens, so that's what you're hearing. Now, because it's getting dark, it's 10 to 5 in the afternoon, it's getting dull by the minute. We're ready, we're going to focus up. So I've just set the focus on my t-shirt, which is going to be about here. And I set it on F28, which is more risky, but we just need that light. 1.3, so I'm going to have to count. 1.3 and I set this to bulb so I can do that. One, two, three. I feel like that was a bit longer than a second point three. Oh well. I'm not one to manufacture a shot because I like the natural look of how things look anyway. I'm not putting extra lighting on, I'm not putting things in the shot, taking them away. But this time around, to make the shot more clear and less distracting, I took out all the bits that are on the sofa. And for this shot here, some nice lilies, uh, lilies, tulips, and I've just taken off a candle. And that's how we have that corner of the room set up. We have a light, we have uh, my Angels and Airwaves vinyl, we have a Michael Scott poster, and we have my photograph of Blink-182. I'm just gonna see how it looks. And I'm not gonna finish the roll today. It's telling me it needs to be exposed for six seconds, which is crazy. But what I'm gonna do is actually shine a light on it so I can see what the hell I'm focusing on. Oh, that's pretty good. Light the dark slide. Okay, dark slide's out. Three, two, one. I've never actually seen this plant here from this angle before. So, what I was thinking of doing is taking one more shot. I really like it because you just get a slither in focus here, 
what I am going to do is put this on f8 so that um, I get a bit more in focus. It just makes for more of an interesting shot. It's telling me eight to 10 seconds. Now I'm battling bright light coming in from there and dark corner. So I'm gonna have to take a average for the light that's hitting the, uh, the cheese plant. actually see what's going on in the lens so hopefully hopefully it all worked out it's just a risky take isn't it so yeah we're going to wrap it up here today uh we've shot six of 12 shots and i'm going to shoot those next six when the light is considerably better but it's really nice today because the light is really soft even though it's dark i've got some nice light to fall off um and hopefully hopefully these shots when i get them sent off are going to be good. Um, so yeah, that rolls up the first half of the roll. We'll see you next time.